Yo, what up guys, I'm Sammy and welcome back to the Soul Brothers channel and this is my first impressions look on the Puma Stewie 1. So this shoe is going for 120 bucks and the reason why I got it so damn late is because uh, I didn't even know it came out. <laughs> so I I, uh, I check like all the websites every day like Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, Puma, New Balance to see if any new shoes come out, right? Uh, but you know, I usually go to just men's right in basketball so I guess I should check women's as well but uh, yeah this isn't available on men's you have to go to the women's section in basketball and obviously because the signature shoe uh, the athlete is a woman right uh, but you know for the Del Dons it was on the Nike like basketball section for men's as well so that's where I got it but anyways uh, yeah if you guys do want to cop I try to leave an affiliate link in the description box but let's get it start off with the traction and we have like a very nice lavender color it's a solid rubber outsole uh, here in the forefoot I'm guessing this is Brianna Stewart's logo and then here we have the Puma logo as well and then it's, it's kind of like clouds and then it's like lightning right that's a pretty cool traction pattern and then here in the heel it's more like herringbone but it it's kind of like a star shape here in the heel as well, right? It says humble and hungry here on like in the forefoot. And also another weird thing is that it says it's high abrasion rubber and uh, it does not seem high abrasion. You know what I mean? Like it's feeling the rubber, it's super soft. Uh, the grooves are really, really thin as well, especially even like where the ball of your foot is right here, right? So I don't think outdoor use is gonna be good. You're probably just gonna rip through this rubber, right? But as far as the traction performance goes, uh, just trying it on my wood floors, it seems all right. There seems to be uh, an okay bite so far. It does not squeak at all, which sucks. Of course, that has nothing to do with performance, but I like to have a little bit of, or actually I like to have a lot of squeak in my ball shoes, right? Hopefully, you know, once I play in it and break it in, it does get a little bit squeakier. That does happen uh, pretty often. So uh, I'm not too worried about that, but the bite isn't seeming too good. Also, the grooves are very, very close together, especially with these like thin grooves. So uh, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about dust pickup. Uh, so right now, for my first impressions, the traction isn't seeming too good, which sucks because I like the overall shoe uh, right now, right? Uh, so there's that. Moving on to the heel to toe transition. Overall, it feels like it's gonna be good, right? So we have a nice, like, little rounded shape here in the heel and also a fully exposed nitro foam. Uh, I guess uh, the rubber does come up the cage, the back of the heel, just a little bit, but overall, it feels nice here in the heel. And then in the forefoot, we have a nice rounded and curved shape and a lot of forefoot flex, right? But it seems like it has good torsional support. It doesn't bend here in the midfoot. So overall, heel to toe transition right now feels nice. And now moving on to the cushioning setup, we got full length nitro foam. And I, I don't know what it is. I guess Puma really likes nitro foam, but yeah, I, I, it's, it's, it's all right. You know, just feeling it with my fingers right here. It's actually on the stiffer side of things. There's not a lot of compression. I would say it's like on the softer side of things, but it's not that soft, right? So here in the heel, it, it's all right for compression. A core feel seems pretty good, especially here in the forefoot. It definitely gets a lot thicker here in the heel. So there is a pretty high offset. Stepping cover is actually really nice because of the insole though. You know, I, Puma actually does this very, very well. You know, just me playing in like their shoes. Uh, like their insoles are like super thick. So that feels great for stepping cover. However, insole you know like Orthlite insoles they kind of like bottom out especially like over time so it's more like a comfort thing at first like right when you get the shoe and then after a little bit it gets a little bit stiffer right and also the strobe board is on the stiffer side of things as well so once you bottom out that insole I don't think it's gonna be that nice right uh, so overall cushioning setup it feels like it's gonna be more on the responsive side of things with good core feel and just a little bit of compression in the heel nothing too comfortable or crazy or anything like that which is a good thing if you want like a responsive cushioning setup up. Uh, but right now it's feeling like you know if you want something a little bit more you know like bounce or crazy impact protection softness compression uh, it's not feeling that crazy right now also another thing I forgot to mention uh, in the traction is the outsole curvature right so it has a little bit of an outsole curvature actually like uh, where the ball of your foot is it reminds me a lot of like the MB1s and the old school Kyrie's and feels really really nice for the most part though it's like flat right it just rounds right here uh, so it's not as crazy as like the MB1s or even like the Kyrie 2 or the Kyrie 3, but it does feel pretty damn nice. And you can definitely feel like this rocking motion where the ball of your foot is. And so when you're doing like crossover and stuff like that, you kind of go on like the, the side of your foot and also get better grip because the rubber does come up to extend here on the medial side of the shoe, right? So that also is a nice added bonus. I do like how that feels so far. And then moving on to the material. So we have pretty much an EM, right? But they're calling this a disruptive upper. 
And I don't know what that means because they literally call all of their uppers disruptive. <laughs> you know, like the MB1 and all their other basketball shoes. So um, yeah, but they're calling it a mono mesh, but it's pretty much an, an EM, right? And it reminds me a little bit of like Nike's EMs as well. I uh, like the Kobe 9 and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, it feels really nice. There's like pretty much zero stretch to it. It does feel a little glued down, just a tiny bit, but overall it's not super stiff. It conforms to your foot actually very, very well. And it's really, really thin. Look at that. Just a super thin and minimal material here in the forefoot and also here in the midfoot, it stays extremely thin as well. Uh, here in the heel, we have like the synthetic material with this like, uh, this pattern on it, right? And then for the tongue, we have actually a good amount of padding. So I feel like Puma likes to have a very minimal upper, but they like to put a lot of padding in their tongue, which feels great. It feels nice and cozy on top of your foot. And then here in the ankle area, however, it, there's actually pretty minimal padding. I would say like more minimal than average, especially comparing to like the MB1 and the MB2, which has a lot of padding here in the heel, right? So overall, it feels great. And also we have a little bit of fuse, right? Uh, we have some fuse over the Puma logo and also here on the medial side. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of fuse at the tip of the toe. So if you do toe drags, it's probably not going to be the best for durability. It's more like on the medial side, but it's also like pretty thin here, right? Uh, but overall, the quality seems pretty damn nice, especially for 120 bucks, and it feels great on foot, right? And I feel like most people will enjoy this material. And also on the last couple of eyelets, we have like the synthetic material as well, which feels very cheap, but it uh, doesn't really contribute to like the overall feeling of the shoe, right? All right, moving on to the fit. Uh, I went true to size and it fits me very, very well. If you guys don't know how to convert from like a men's to a women's size. So for example, if you're a size 10 in men's, go a size and a half up, and that would be an 11 and a half in women's, right? So if you're size 10, just get a size 11 and a half in women's and you should be good to go. I went true to size and it fits me very, very well, right? So my toes go pretty much right to the edge of the shoe. Also here in the toe box, it's a nice snug fit. It's also a pretty narrow fit and it stays narrow here in the forefoot as well as here in the midfoot. So overall, it fits me pretty much like a glove. It fits me perfectly and I really like how it fits so far. So if you like a nice snug fit, go true to size. If you don't like that and you want more of like a roomier fit, I would suggest going up half a size or maybe even a full size because it's a really snug fit, especially here in the forefoot. All right, moving on to the support and lockdown, I am a little bit worried about the forefoot lateral containment, right? There's really nothing, right? And this mesh, this EM material is like, it feels pretty supportive, right? Uh, but it feels like it's gonna roll over on itself a little bit. Look at that just a tiny bit. So um, I, I feel like, you know, it'll be good for me because I'm on the lighter side of things, right? But for people that are a little bit heavier, we'll have to see on that. So when I'm playing, I'm definitely going to uh, look out for that. Uh, but here in the midfield, we have, I guess, like, I mean, the, the Puma logo and is like fused up a little bit, but it's like not that stiff. Uh, but I guess here in the midfield, we have the synthetic material a little bit. Uh, but here in the heel, we definitely have the foam coming up acting as a sidewall. And it feels like there's an internal heel calendar. So lateral containment feels like it's gonna be good. Uh, but just a little bit worried about here in the forefoot. Lateral stability, however, feels like it's gonna be very good, right? Uh, they actually added an outrigger. So uh, the outsole extends out, right? And we have a pretty wide base here in the forefoot, which is kind of rare. You know, Puma usually doesn't add outriggers to their ball shoes. They're actually pretty narrow in like most of the shoes that I've tried from them. Uh, so that is a nice little addition. And of course, this is a low top, so you don't get like ankle support. Uh, but lateral stability seems very good. So a uh, support and lockdown feels like it's gonna be very good. And also I don't seem to have any type of like heel slippage or anything. So there's that. And now moving on to the weight of the shoe. It's probably gonna be a little bit on the heavier side of things. I'm guessing like 13 ounces because nitro foam is pretty heavy, right? Yeah, 13.76 ounces. And that's it with this really thin EM material, right? So I feel like, you know, please Puma and un also Under Armour, um, if you guys can, you know, do some R&D and get some better foams, <laughs> that would be nice, you know? Uh, but let's check the other pair. 13.9 ounces, so a, a little bit closer to 14 ounces. And yeah, it definitely feels kind of heavy. It doesn't feel bulky at all, which is a good thing, right? Overall, like there's nothing's protruding out uh, or bubbling or anything like that. So that feels nice. Uh, so overall, like the upper feels very minimal, but it feels a little bit heavy. You know what I mean? It doesn't feel super light, especially comparing to like, you know, the PG6 or the Curry's. So there's that, but hopefully it feels responsive. Like I said, I like most things about the shoe right now. It's just trash and doesn't seem great, right? Uh, moving on to the aesthetics. I love it. Uh, the designers over at Puma, they're killing it. I love this colorway. I love this gradient on this upper. It's a very subtle gradient, right? It's a very light purple here and it gets a little bit darker. And then like for the midsole and uh, this heel piece, we have pretty much like a, a very 
pink color, right? So tell us what you guys think of the aesthetics down in the comment section below. So wrapping things up, yeah, everything seems pretty damn good. It's just, it's a little bit on the heavier side of things, which I don't like, but that's not a huge deal because it feels overall minimal. But like I said, uh, we're gonna have to see on the traction performance. Once I break it in, hopefully it, it becomes top tier because I do like how the shoe feels overall on foot right now. Uh, but anyways, that about concludes my first impressions look on the Stewie 1. Again, if you guys want to cop a try to leave an affiliate link in the description box. But that's it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.